Hey there guys, welcome back to the channel. So my name is Shivank and I'm currently a third year medical student at Imperial College London. And today's video is all about what to do after the UCAT. So this video will be split up into two main sections. Firstly, I'll be talking about the next steps after UCAT. So this involves your personal statement, BMAT, choosing universities, interviews, etc. And then the second part of this video will be assessing your UCAT score. So how to interpret whether it's a good score or competitive score, how to interpret which university you think will be best uh, suited according to your UCAT score and whether or not to do the BMAT accordingly. And so without further ado, let's get started. So firstly, let's talk about next steps and most importantly, the personal statement. So this is unfortunately something that's very neglected. I think it's something that people think is just a tick box exercise that you just have to write a statement as to why you're enthusiastic about medicine, such as, oh, since childhood, I was really interested in medicine. And that's the real the issue here. The idea that every single personal statement is very similar in medicine. And so it's really important that what makes you stand out from other candidates is your own experience. So it's really important. So for me personally, I attended work experience in a hospital. And so that experience in the hospital was only unique to me. And so I can talk about that. And if an interviewer were to look at my personal statement and they ask me a question about it, I'll be very knowledgeable about it because I was there in the experience. And that's what's really key. I think when writing your personal statement, don't think of it as a tick, tick for exercise that it doesn't really matter because as long as your statement is okay, you'll be fine. Try and think of something that's unique to you and something that's really useful for medicine, whether this is a skill, so for example, within medicine, leadership is very important. And unfortunately, nine times out of 10, especially in my school, whenever there's an issue of leadership men mentioned, everyone just mentioned Duke of Edinburgh, such as I was leading my team or I was working as a team together. I think that's good. It's good to have examples, but it's really important to stand out. I think that's just one thing to get away from this video for a personal statement is to make sure that it stands out from others um by your own experiences and by just using skills that good, good examples for the skills that you have secondly let's talk about the BMAT. so now you've done the ucat one of the hardest exams for medical entrance so congratulations on that but now we have to focus on the BMAT. so this is whether you decide to do the BMAT or not which we'll get on to in the next steps but firstly for the BMAT, don't overwork yourself i think it's really important that you take a gradual step by step uh, build up for the BMAT the same way you did for the UCAT and what I would do right now if you have some spare time is just look over the BMAT specification look at the physics biology chemistry sections etc uh, for me personally I didn't do physics a level and so I knew this was gonna be one of my weak points and so all I did during the holidays after the UCAT was look at my BMAT um, physics section and just glance over what I found really difficult because it's been a long time since I did physics, so I used the CGP guides and various other things um, in order to feel more confident in physics. And so when I properly started preparation during school time, I did all of them at once and I had the same foundation knowledge for each. But it's up to you how to do it. I would just recommend don't overwork yourself now. Uh, you definitely deserve a break. I think if you have time, just look over um, the sections, familiarize yourself with what the BMAT is. Um, what kind of questions they can ask, how time pressure is, etc. Thirdly, and I cannot emphasize this more, is please, please, please focus on your A-levels. The A-levels are the most important thing within your medicine entry because many people are able to secure interviews because they're working really hard, they know what to do, they've had lots of practice and they're able to do it. But something that's very different to all this medicine preparation is your A-levels, something which you've been programmed to study in school and something which is really important to have um, not only because it's a qualification to your name, but because it's the final step in uh, ensuring your medicine admissions place. So it's really important that you don't neglect this. I think for me personally, I ensured that whilst interviews are a priority, I wasn't falling behind at school. So making sure that in exams, I was still performing well, um, even if that meant that less, slightly less interview time, um, it's just I had to make sure I balanced it out. So obviously when interviews are very near, um, I made sure to prioritize interviews, but then once they were done instantly, I made sure to prioritize my A-levels and not feel instantly relaxed. All oh, interviews are done. All oh, UCAP, BMA is done. Uh, make sure that you do consider A-levels alongside all of these um, extra stuff. And another part of the A-levels is also the EPQ. So for those of you who do it, uh, make sure you try and get that done out of the way as quick as possible. So for me, it was also during the holidays. So I made sure whilst doing my UCAT every day, I did a bit of the EPQ. 
And so after the UCAT, literally within one or two days, all I would do is write a couple of paragraphs and proofread it, and then that was it. Um, whereas many other candidates had just focused solely on the UCAT, so they were already burnt out because they were just doing the same thing again and again and again. And then they only had one or two days to do pretty much the whole of the EPQ and so weren't able to score that well or felt really, really burnt out and exhausted, which is not what you want. Um, especially after the exam, you want to relax for a bit um, and that's definitely what you should be doing. So I think it's really important that you have effective time management skills throughout year 12 and 13, especially right now. And so now the second part of this video, which will hopefully make the bulk of this video and what you guys are waiting for, is assessing for your UCAT score. So firstly, make sure you use your interim UCAT results. So you can see on the screen here what I mean, and essentially you can use your score. So let's say if you scored in my year, if you scored 2,880, so 720 average, you can see it, uh, it was in the top 10% decile when I did it, and so I knew that I could uh, have, I had a competitive score and had a high chance of getting into many competitive universities. That doesn't mean that I'll be guaranteed an interview for every single university. This also includes, for example, your predicted grades, your personal statement, etc. But I knew that I would have a higher chance than, for example, having applied to a different university which has a much higher UCAT threshold. So, for example, for me, Edinburgh had a really high UCAT threshold, perhaps around 2,900, 3,000. And so I knew it would be best to apply to there, despite my decent UCAT score. So, firstly, as mentioned before, make sure you cross-check your UCAT score with the university requirements. So, St. George's required 500 average, 500 minimum in each section. Um, and then as long as you had that, you had a high chance of interview. And so because I met the minimum university requirements, I knew I could try and get an interview. Then the second step linking onto this is, first of all, okay, well done, you met the minimum university requirements, but then the offers, so the interviews are usually for slightly higher. So let's say if the minimum UK requirement was 2,500. That doesn't mean if you get 2,500 that you will definitely get in because that is the minimum that you've got to have a chance of interview. Not a guarantee, but a chance for interview. So what I do is again, linking to my previous video, is about FOI. So this is Freedom of Information. Um, this is where you can request data from universities um, about previous UCAT scores that candidates had. So let's say in the year before, the minimum was 2,500, but every single person that got an interview um, was 2,600 and above. So that means that there's a 100 uh, increase. So whilst you may have a high chance, if let's say you've got a 4 star prediction and you've got an amazing personal statement, then there is a chance you may be selected for interview with a score of 2,500, but you're much better off getting 100 above because then according to last year, you'll still be able to get in. And so that's basically what I did for mine. So for example, if I think Queen Mary's, uh, I knew that I had the minimum cutoff and then when using FOI and then researching about because um, Queen Mary's also had this thing where <coughs> if you did an EPQ or extra A level, you got extra points. Um, and so considering most of that, I knew I had a high chance of getting an interview for Queen Mary University. So third linking again is once you've uh, met your criteria and you're slightly above the minimum requirements, make a short list of all the universities which meet this. So let's say if you are uh, good for Leicester, Liverpool, Queen Mary's, King College, just write all of them down in Excel spreadsheet or notes wherever you feel comfortable. Um, I think this is really important because then you have all the universities which you have a high chance of getting into. And then this is the filtering part. Now you have to look at all the universities, think, would I be happy living here? Is it too far from home? Is it too close from home? Um, do I like the campus? Do I like the course structure? All of these questions should come across your mind when selecting and filtering the universities. And that's what's really important. This is the next step because you, you, if you have six universities, you can't put six universities on your offer form. So you need to make sure you choose the universities which are best suited to you and will make you really happy. I think that's what's really key um, in this. So let's give an example. Let's say you have five universities to choose from and uh, these are all UK universities and you're really happy to go to any of them having filtered down from seven universities. So what you need to consider now is, first of all, do you want to give the BMAT? So for me personally, if I take my example, I had around five universities or six universities that I filtered down and was pretty confident that I would get an interview. From this, I was able to filter three. Now, uh, so I was able to filter six as I said, 
Now, for me, I wanted to do the BMAT because my main aspiration at university was Imperial College. Um, and I really didn't want to miss on, out on that and at least have a chance at it. So I knew that I was going to do the BMAT. And so I kept one BMAT university. I didn't want to put two because I didn't want to risk not getting the interview because if, for instance, I didn't do as well in the BMAT, then it would immediately knock out two universities for me, which I thought personally was a big risk. And so I wanted to do one BMAT and then keep three UK universities, which I knew I had a high chance. And as a result, I got those three UK universities uh, interview. And so it's really important what you feel comfortable. If you think that, OK, I'm my UK score is not really the best. I'm not too happy uh, with my UK score then it's perfectly fine. You can put one UK university which you think you have a chance of getting into because you meet the minimum criteria. criteria. Uh, or if you don't want to put any, that's also perfectly fine. You can put zero universities and then you can do all four BMAT. But you need to make sure that you understand that there is a big risk with this because with the UK score, you know you've got the score and you can cross-check against universities or email universities. But with your BMAT, you used to get your score after you submit your universities. And so it's really important that you fully consider this. Um, and so, for example, many of my friends also did th three UCAT, one BMAT, but one of my friends, for instance, didn't even do the UCAT exam, I did all four BMAT universities and was able to secure an offer and is currently at Imperial. And so it is a bit of luck in that sense, but I think the best thing to do is to check you're comfortable with your score. And according to that, if you are, I would say definitely put two universities, if not three. If you're not feeling comfortable, I would still say put two because there's a lot of options. If you have good predicted grades and a good personal statement, you will still have a high chance at many universities. Uh, or you can put one university for UCAT, uh, which you think you can at least get. Because it's really important that within medicine to get a seat, because it doesn't matter which university, I think, as long as you get a seat and you really work hard uh, whilst in medical school, you'll still be able to achieve really well, I think it's really important that you secure the medical seat and are really happy wherever you go. Now, to summarize this video. So firstly, it's really important that you now have a really good structure for the next uh, next year. This involves managing your time for EPQ A-levels, for your interviews, for personal statement, BMAT, etc. Make sure you have it really planned out uh, so that you don't fall behind on any of them. Secondly, with the UCAT, I think wherever UCAT score is, be happy about it. I think you've done, a, you've done a really great job, no matter what the UK score is. Next step going forward is to see whether you can do the BMAT instead because you think your UK score isn't what you want it to be or because you want to go to a BMAT university. Or for instance, if you're really comfortable with the UK score and really want to go to UK university, by all means, put all UK uh, universities or for example, three to one uh, split. But I think what's really, really important and the main students don't do is research for universities because depending on your UK score, if you apply to a university which has a minimum criteria of 3,000 and your score is 2,900, which is a very good score, then you'd just be wasting a, a, a chance because you definitely have a chance of applying at a different university, but this certain university that you've applied to just has a really high cutoff. And so I think it's really important that you research your universities because you don't want to waste a seat um, that, you, that you could have easily got had you applied to a different university. And so Hopefully this video was really helpful for you guys and if you have any questions, please let me know in the comments. Anyways, thank you for watching.